What I'm going to do is, I'm going to use the debug IP rip command. You can go ahead and hit enter at this point, or you can actually qualify this by using a question mark to indicate either a rip database, rip events, or a rip trigger. And I'm going to go ahead and choose to debug the entire rip process. Then I'm going to hit enter. And what you're going to start to notice is the information being received and sent. I just received the version 1 update from router 2.2. Within 30 second intervals here, we're going to start to see updates from the other routers as well as processing going out. Notice that I just sent an update to the broadcast address 255.255.255.255. I have done it once for each interface and you can see that I've also received inbound updates from 255.2 and 253.2. Here comes another update from 2.2 as updates come in on a 30 second interval. Like a clock, even though our network is not changing, these updates are going to go back to generate all of these packets and all of these subnets and so on despite the fact that the network is not changing. You can see that I only have three other routers that I'm talking to and have only four interfaces. So you can imagine how much traffic would be generated by the RIP protocol process in a large network environment where I've got literally hundreds of networks and possibly even thousands of networks. This amount of network traffic can overburden even the fastest networks, so you need to be aware of where you make a decision to use RIP.